All right, welcome everybody to the May 18th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As you may be aware, two things that we have to abide by on the call. The first is the antitrust policy. Uh, so there are obviously competitors in this meeting um, that may exist. And so we must make sure that we're not, uh, not doing anything against the different antitrust and competition laws across the world. The second thing that we have to abide by is the code of conduct. Uh, while all are welcome here, uh, we do have a code of conduct and that is linked in the agenda. Uh, basically be nice to each other, um, be respectful of each other. So as we go through the agenda, we do have the standard announcement today. Um, so I don't know who's sharing. Rai, if you could just scroll down in the announcements. Uh, so the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. If you do have something that you want to include in that newsletter, please do leave a comment on the uh, wiki page that is linked in the agenda. Uh, we do have some PRs that are out there uh, that have been out there for a bit. So just put a reminder in there to uh, remind everybody to go review those PRs. I did notice that a number of people had done that. Um, so we're probably making some good progress towards getting the TOC members to review those. Uh, as far as quarterly reports go, oh, I'm sorry, do we have any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Uh, so for quarterly reports, we did have the Bevel report come in today or over uh, the evening in, in some cases. So please do have a look at that. I've seen a few people who have reviewed that. The Solang report also came in. I wasn't expecting it. Um, so I guess I have to go check the calendar and see um, if I either missed it somewhere along the line or, or what, but that one did come in as well this week. So please do have a look at that one. Uh, are there any questions so far on the quarterly reports that exist uh, that we need to discuss here in the TOC meeting? All right, I will take that as no, I didn't see anything uh, specific. As far as past due reports, we still are waiting on the Hyperledger Sawtooth report. Uh, we're rapidly approaching the one month uh, for that being due. So we'll um, see if we can get another reminder out to them. I didn't see any sort of responses coming back, but I also have been a bit lax in reading my uh, Discord this week. So um, if, if anybody has any updates on the Sawtooth report, uh, can you let us know now? Okay, we will make sure to get a reminder out there um, and see if we can get that one coming in as well. So on the calendar itself, I didn't see anything uh, as far as upcoming reports until June. Uh, so I think Cello is actually the next one that was that I noticed on the calendar. Uh, but as I mentioned, we do have a bevel and the, the Solang report that came in for us to take a look at. So please do take a look at those in this upcoming week and we will make sure to have those on the agenda for next week to make sure if there's anything that we should discuss, we can discuss. All right, so for discussion items today, we have three items on the agenda. The first is the um, is a request that we got from the governing board that I'll talk about. The second is, uh, that there is a GitHub issue reminder PR that uh, Arun has put out there. And so I wanna make sure that we have a, can have a conversation about that. And then the last thing on the list is just to close out the security vulnerability disclosure task force. Any other items that anybody would like to discuss uh, or that we should think about adding to the agenda for today? Okay, so the first thing uh, I believe I mentioned at some points at the beginning of the year 
that the governing board did have a conversation in the December uh, meeting that they had, their face-to-face -face meeting that they had, where they wanted to talk about how we currently review our existing projects to understand kind of the state of those projects and, and what their status is. Um, obviously, we've been doing most of that through the quarterly review process, but there has been a specific request from the governing board um, to implement a review process that is potentially um, minimally annually, uh, where we review the, the different project status and see if it's in the correct state. So um, if we take a look at that, it, it's uh, really intended to make sure that we as a TOC are uh, checking out and making sure that a project is actually in the status that it belongs in. Uh, and that if we identify certain projects that don't match their current status, uh, that we potentially change the status to reflect the current state of that project. Um, so I'm not gonna read this whole thing. Obviously it was linked in the agenda, um, but we'll give some time for people to actually read it if they hadn't had a chance. I think that the main thing here is that we're seeing in other open source projects across the Linux Foundation um, that the, they typically have a process for doing project reviews and moving projects to the status. Um, as you are probably all aware in Hyperledger, we do have the project life cycle. The project life cycle is a forward only sort of um, uh, movement. So we can you know, move forward in the project life cycle, but not backwards. Um, so, you know, this could be a chance for us to think about that project life cycle and review whether or not it's actually what we want um, as far as, um, uh, hey, right, you're looking at the swagger on the share. Um, so take a look at the, our project life cycle, see if it's what we want or see if we should be taking a, a more um, I guess, advanced approach to how we look at project life cycle to match some of the other foundations that exist within the Linux Foundation. So um, now that I've rambled on, hopefully you've had enough time to actually review the, the text here uh, and see if there's any sort of commentary or thoughts, initial thoughts on this particular request from the governing board to the TOC to, to take a look at how we evaluate the status of projects and the state that they're in. Arun? Thanks, Tracy. Um, so this comment is mostly based on the explanation you, uh, you're providing in this call. And I'm curious to learn when you say other open source communities have a review process in place. And that kind of makes me think we do have a review process. So I'm just curious to learn more of that comment. Yeah, so I think, you know, what we have been doing in the Hyperledger Foundation is that we have the quarterly reports that we um, typically read. It is sometimes the case that I, I think we've seen it where a project will be reporting their status and everything will look great, but actually the project isn't great. Um, and so if we look at uh, different projects like CNCF or uh, even the new Open Wallet Foundation project, they do have a project a project review process whereby they uh, assign somebody in the TOC to actually go off and do some research about a project on an annual review process, typically, where they you know check to see is the project actually have. Uh, contributors or the maintainers keeping up to date with what's going on? Um, are they in the status that they expect to be in? So, um, you know, I know uh, with the Open Wallet Foundation process, the they actually have very specific um, goals for each of the states. Um, so in, in the Open Wallet Foundation, they're called uh, growth and impact is what the, the states are called, which would line up with our incubation and our graduate. And they basically have goals that say, you know, so many maintainers from different companies the same way that we do, but they also have goals around the fact that 
you know, that it's being used in production or um, different sorts of specifics that can be looked at across the board and say, is the project still meeting this or should they move back in the, the life cycle or maybe forward to an end of life, right? In the life cycle to say, um, you know, this project actually really isn't in an impact state anymore. Uh, it's it's more trying to to go through the growth cycle again, or it's more at an end of life cycle. And so, each of these different uh, foundations within the Linux Foundation have you know different sorts of expectations for their projects, as well as uh, this review cycle where a TOC member is really responsible for going in and digging in and, and understanding the true state um, and not just the reported state based on uh, the quarterly reports like we do at the Hyperledger Foundation. Bobby? So would there be a matrix of checkpoints that the projects would have to do once a year or someone in the TOC review from the projects applying it? And would it be done like a, instead of just quarterly reports, have one of those reports be the additional, or do you see a different structure for that um, workflow? Yeah, I think that's really up to us, Bobby, as far as what we think might be the, the right approach. Um, obviously, we can take a look at these other foundations and the process that, get, that they go through to see if there's some learnings that we can have uh, from those different foundations. Um, you know, I think the the main part about what we've been doing is as we've tried to look at project health, um, you know, with the task force last year, as we've done our quarterly reports, we haven't come up with any, what I would say, objective criteria yet um, that we can actually check to see whether or not these projects are meeting uh, to know whether or not they're actually in like the state that they should be. So. I think that's, you know, obviously for us to decide as far as, you know, how do we, how do we um, solve this request that we've gotten from the governing board to, to help us um, really understand whether projects are in the sta state that they should be in. And so if we can come up with that matrix, Bobby, then yeah, maybe that's the way that we wanna, wanna go. But I, I don't know that I have an answer. I guess if I had an answer, um, I'd present that, but I, I haven't uh, haven't done that. I think that's something that maybe we should focus in on with a particular task force or, um, you know, and, and try and get the ideas from the, the folks here, obviously, in the, the TOC. I, I knew there was a task force in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's the, uh, you know, obviously we can try and have discussions with the, with this group and um, try and come to some sort of resolution. But I do think that, you know, by having somebody kind of step up and lead, um, lead this and really try and figure out what it is that might be a good suggestion will help, right? Um, what I have found in us doing these task forces is that if somebody creates something uh, for people to react to, it's easier than just like, let's have an open discussion and try and figure it out, right? Um, it's always easier for people to react to something that somebody has created. Um, yeah, thanks, Ryan, for bringing up the CNCF one. Arun? Right, this may be a premature comment, but um, I was just curious, isn't there annual review process, same as our quarterly review process? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, is it? Have we been able to determine that projects need to um, move to a different state? Uh, I, I don't I don't know that we actually ask some of these, you know, sorts of questions that will help us determine, are they really, um, you know, still moving forward or not. So uh, I think it's, I think that was the intention around of our quarterly reports, but I'm not sure that it's worked in the way that we would have expected it to. Um, it's very easy for people to say things are great and for us to believe that without actually digging in and understanding whether or not that's true.
All right. Thanks, Tracy. So um, I'm after this, after listening to this, I'm willing to participate in one of the review calls if it is open and listen or just participate and observe what happens over there. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be, uh, be great to actually see it in process and be able to understand it better. I will try to find if there are any uh, meeting notes from CNCF's review processes and make those available. I, you know, I've only just started looking into this. All right, thanks, Roy. Yeah, I think that's the uh, that's the key here, right? Is uh, we need to do some research, better understand what other projects have, um, see if there's something that we can do potentially differently or in addition to our quarterly reports to to make this process um you know something that would really understand what the state of a project is i know that um i had the impression uh, based on the that december meeting uh, with the governing board that this was going to be coming for us at some point this year. Uh, and I did create a task force issue uh, for us to be able to take a look at this. And so um, I'll also find that one and put the link out there. We haven't um, we haven't signed up to do that one yet, but it is one that I, I did expect to, for us to have to tackle this year. Other thoughts at this point? concerns. Stephen. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking that, you know, is it a, is it that we just need as a TOC to be more aggressive in responding to the quarterly reports combined with the statistics, the metrics, I mean, that that um, you know was talked about on a previous call, and that that Rye generates. Um, that certainly would have pushed a lot earlier on Ursa, for example. Um, so we use like right now we basically are waiting on the the quarterly report before initiating things and is it just a question of we just need to be more aggressive at saying hey wait a sec we're just not seeing the metrics yeah i think that's a it's a good possibility steven i you know i missed that one call um a couple weeks back and there was some discussion that the that was brought up around this topic um during that call and I think I I put a a message out on the TOC chat after I listened. Right, I was as I was listening, I'm like, yeah, gotta be more aggressive, or gotta, uh, you know, instead of waiting three months before we take some action, we should, you know, maybe a month is is kind of the place that we need to start taking some action when we don't see any sort of responses or um, we're not getting, you know, those quarterly reports coming in. Right, um, I I think in the past we have been very much not wanting to take action um, too soon, right? And, uh, you know, basically, I, I think there's reasons for that. I think there's also reasons to, you know, figure out what that right timing is to take action. Um, you know, I, I think if, if we take action too soon, it's very possible that we, you know, alienate people uh, we're not seen as very welcoming and, and those sorts of things if we wait too long um, then we end up with a, a situation where people are expecting to be able to get answers and responses or you know their pull requests merged and and it's not happening and so um, you know they get discouraged and, and you know move on to other projects and, and those sorts of things so I think there's you know a a balance and I'm not sure that we've found the right balance at this point, uh, I don't think we are being aggressive enough, but at the same point, like, where is the, 
you know, we don't want to, uh, I guess, you know, hit the pendulum too hard and swing too, too far the other way. Um, so I think that's for us to really try and figure out as a group and try and determine what is the best sort of approach here. Other other thoughts or comments or concerns or questions. Daniela. I know how to mute. I just want to make a comment that um you know, a lot of the work that the TSC merging into the talk and this current TOC um board, right, the committee, um, a lot of the work that you've done over the last, you know, I would say 12 to 18 months, maybe even a little bit more, has moved the project uh, health and review cycle to a much closer point to this than before. Um, and so I want to thank everybody, everybody who's on the current TOC and those that were in the TSC before the last elections, because it is just gradually also helped us move the process of, you know, providing, you know, helping provide project services as a staff, right, as staff, helping provide project services, helping identify uh, projects that we can help promote and, you know, bring in new, uh, new contributors and maintainers um, and those that need extra help. So I just want to thank, it's not like, hey, the board sat around for three months and decided this is something that they were going to do. They also recognize very much that the project uh, the foundations, um, TOC, and the work that everybody has done has moved us to this point where we, um, as a mature, maturing, you know, continuing maturing projects, um, we can do this kind of um, evaluation and review. So just want to thank everybody on this. It's not something that happened overnight, and there's been a lot of things already done that have put us there, and the board acknowledges that. Yeah, I appreciate as does, that, Daniela. As, as do myself, because, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been watching this whole process uh, since 2017 as well. Um, and uh, the rest of the staff really appreciates it as well. Thanks for that, Daniela. I, you know, I know that every year that I have been on the TOC, we have had a discussion about Project Health. Um, obviously, quarterly reports is one of those action items that we took. We've um, you know, change some of the life cycle. Uh, I think we used to call it what active, now we're graduated. Um, you know, we've had the task force to actually think about project health. We've, we've, this is something that I think is, uh, you know, we're trying to definitely improve on each year. And so um, this is just another step in that process of how do we, how do we make additional improvements to, to make sure that we, can recognize the projects that are, um, you know, obviously doing a great job and are healthy in, in the way that they act and behave, um, and then helping out the projects that, that need some help, right? And I think even looking at, say, uh, the work that Dave did with the best practices, uh, the project best practices task force, right? I think that is a big step in, in helping projects to really understand what it is to um, be healthy. And I think it's, um, you know, while it's something that we did here in the TOC, we probably want to at some point uh, do some advertisement about that so that other people are aware um, that this exists and that they have a, a resource to go look at. So um, yeah, any other comments before we kind of move on to the next topic? I think you know for next steps. I think what what we should do is to think about activating that task force um, and trying to work through and understand these different sorts of review processes that do exist in the different foundations. Um, Arun, if you do find a, a meeting and, and you can come back and report to us on how that actually looks and what that um, how that works, that'd be great. Rai, if you find any documentation. Um, that you can share with us. I think that'll be a good input into, you know, really starting this process and, and moving this forward. So um, let's keep this obviously on our radar uh, and we will uh, see what we can do to meet the governing board's request so that we can report back to them um, how we how we are moving forward with this. 
All right, the next item on the agenda is just this GitHub issue reminder uh, PR Arun that you created. I did want to make sure that you had an opportunity to talk about this so that people understood what they were looking at um, as they were reviewing this PR. Um, so just maybe a, you know, a short description of what this is all about and, um, and then people can take a look at the PR and uh, review that for whether or not it's, uh, you know, it has any issues or, or any concerns that people might have. Sure, Tracy. Um, so as, as many of you know, the current way of reminding project teams is that um, we go and then ask them either on Discord private chat or we ask project maintainers to send the quarterly reports um, on the maintainers um, chart if they have one. And then we wait for the response and many times it it may so happen that there's a lot of chart that um, back and forth that, that goes through. And I felt that reminding project teams to send a quarterly report should be, it, it's a task that project maintainers have to go through just like any other tasks in terms of project maintainers that are project management that a project needs to do. And um, since recently we also had a discussion around having all the projects moving their uh, project management aspects more to GitHub issues. Felt like, how about sending a reminders uh, through a GitHub issue, right? So this would be assigned as a task to maintainers. It would notify maintainers as well as TOC members of a pending quarterly report. And um, a project team has to raise a PR and they would link the PR in the issue and they would close the issue once the issue is, once the PR is submitted. So um, the issue acts as a reminder and any discussion will continue on that GitHub issue. And these issues would be, I know there are a few projects which has multiple repositories such as Aries, um, um, like the, where the maintainer site itself could be varying. And we can always add uh, the, the respective people who the issue needs to be assigned to, uh, which is the primary repository where we may need to raise a GitHub issue for those projects. So apart from that one gray area, I felt other things were good enough over here. So yeah, um, any comments from the TOC members for this process of reminders For those of you who are doing quarterly reports, uh, creating an issue in your GitHub repo, does it make sense uh, for you folks? Is that a place that you would uh, typically be looking? And would it uh, would it jog your memory, if you will, to, to say, oh, I have to do a quarterly report for my project? Steven? Um, a, yes, um, but B, quick question. Um, are you actually assigning it as part of this GitHub action or or does it, um, or does it just get opened as an issue? It, it gets assigned. Okay, good, good, okay. Yep, I think it's a great idea. Yep, I think it's helpful. And a route it gets assigned to all the maintainers. Is that correct? That is correct. So if you open the um, GitHub, uh, the the sample file, right? And so feel free to update this maintainers list, right? So over here for each of the project, I took the maintainers list for now from the um, GitHub teams that I could find. Um, okay. I'm I'm looking into automating this. I know Rai has a CSV file for, with list of all the maintainers somewhere else. But if this process gets through, for now, I fill this file by myself. But once this process gets through, I can try and see if we can pull the maintainers in for automatically. Okay. Cool. And, and so you, so in this, to deal with that Aries issue, we can just pick which repo it, it updates, right? So that's that takes care of that. That's correct. And we could also customize the text that we want to add within the 
uh, reminders that we want to send. Yeah. And yeah. This, Excellent. This tool works for any issue reminders. Like we could schedule reminders to different projects for different things, not necessarily just the quarterly reports. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments at this point? No. Okay. Um, so obviously the PRs out there, please do have a look at it and uh, provide any additional thoughts or feedback based on what you're seeing. And uh, we will just let the PR process take that through. Um, I did want to bring this up, especially um, just because of it hasn't been discussed yet at any of our previous meetings. And, um, you know, I, I knew this PR was out there waiting for people to take a look at. All right, uh, Stephen, I'm going to drop your hand. Okay, uh, so then uh, the next item on our discussion for today is the task force discussion the security vulnerability disclosures. Um, from what I remember where we're at is we did have um, the template that was created. And I think this is intended to be the last kind of closing uh, session for this particular task force with uh, just the you know final results and, and where we're at and what needs to you know happen if anything else needs to happen for this. So Arun, this one I think is yours as well. See heart. Oh, heart. Hey Tracy, um, I think we may want to have <clears throat> potentially one more uh, one more meeting on this. Okay. So what I would like to do uh, is would like to, uh, I know some comments came in fairly recently, um, and I apologize for not getting those incorporated sooner. Uh, but as I was counting, I'm on my ninth conference in the past month. <laughs> I just haven't had time. As well. Heart, we lost you for quite a bit of that. Um, so sorry, sorry, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in a car on a way to a conference again. Can you? Hello. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you, Heart. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the car, of course, on the way to another conference. Um, so, what? So he accidentally hung up, or he got disconnected. Yeah, looks um. like he dropped. <laughs> so what I heard was uh, they need another meeting, and it's I'm it's unclear if it needs to be discussed. Oh, Hart's back. Apologies. Can you all hear me now? <laughs> yes. Sort of. What if I'm the car? Um, I, do you want me to just type this in Discord? Please. Okay, I'll cut in and type what I want to say in Discord. I just want to point out that Hart is in the middle of Silicon Valley driving in the car and can't get connection. So we're really <laughs> we are we are top of the line here in Silicon Valley. It just sounded like uh, he was jumping between multiple um, cell towers or something. Um, so. That's great. Um, so we do need one more session, it sounds like. Um, and uh, there's some updates that have been made to the document uh, that people have commented on and Hart is going to try and get those included in uh, in the, the document itself when he has time outside of his conferences. Um, we'll see if he uh, has put anything in the chat yet. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, anything else that we need to discuss then on the security task force today? Um, so I think the request for comments is happening in a Google Doc. The link for which is available. Um, we can reshare that link in the, in the TOC mailing list. 
I just saw hearts messages that he would like everyone to add in comment for an address or discuss on each of the comment which is open and then take these suggestions back to open SSF, take their feedback. I'm sorry, I'm just being a reader of hearts messages now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I just posted everything in Discord. I hope it all makes sense to everyone, and I hope it's uh, more understandable than me talking on Zoom. All right, sounds good, Hart. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I think it definitely makes sense for us to uh, review, get feedbacks and uh, comments in that document, um, and then we can, I guess the next time we discuss this particular task force, we can make sure we have a vote um, to see if it's what we were all expecting as we um, go through that. And then, uh, yeah, obviously the next security task force is on artifact signing um, that we're going to be taking on as well. So anything else then just to close out the security vulnerability disclosure uh, task force discussion today that we need to talk about? Okay, I will take that as a no. Um, so I think the next task force discussion for next week will be Bobby, you um, documentation and onboarding. If you want to combine those or if we need to separate those at some point, let me know. We can separate those. And then I think it's on to some of the newer task forces um, to get incorporated into the schedule. So I will take a look and remind myself which ones we agreed to start and ensure that. Uh, whoever is going to present the week after knows that they're going to be presenting the week after uh, or starting that discussion for that task force the week after. Any other discussion items for today that we need to talk through on the TOC call? Okay, if there's nothing else, then I guess we will close out the meeting for today and we will talk to you all again next week. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah.